All right, guys, Rich here from the RCNetwork.com, and today it's review time for the Arma Outcast 6S BLX Stunt Truck. So I decided to do a quick little mini review on the Arma Outcast, mostly because it is the season. It is the season of giving and hopefully you guys will get some good information out of this review. So maybe if you are in the market or have a loved one that's in the market for an Arma Outcast or a stunt truck or just something that's just generally fun to have, uh, this video should hopefully give you some good information whether or not you should buy this RTR. So the Outcast is exactly that. It's an RTR. Out of the box, it comes with everything you need to get running on day one. However, you do have to supply your own battery. So four AA's for the remote, and you do have to provide anywhere from four to six S LiPo power. Now that can be a configuration of one single four S or six S or two separate batteries. It does have the plugs, the XT90 connectors to make any configuration, whether it be single or double. Two of the most asked questions I've received since I got the Outcast 6S BLX was how does it drive and did anything break? And in this video, I'll definitely share those two points with you guys. Now I have jotted down several different positives and negatives, and I'd like to go through those at this time. So let's start with some of the negatives I jotted down. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is the looks being a negative. Yes, I did say negative. Some people like the looks of the outcast. Some people absolutely hate it. I somewhat like it because it does resemble a early 60s truck vehicle like an F100 Ford. I definitely like uh, those vehicles and that's kind of what it looks like. Next on the list is the wing. I don't think it needs a wing anymore. This is a monster truck. I haven't really seen too many monster trucks with wings on it. I know that on serious high speed runs when you're hitting that 60 mile per hour claimed weight, it definitely gives some traction by lowering the rear of the vehicle. But it is just something that gets in the way, and as you see right here, I have definitely skidded across a few things here. I definitely like the wheelie bar, that is definitely on the positive list, but the wing, I think, just is too much at this point. So, diff gears. This was actually out of my center diff. It was attached to the front output going out to the front drive system. It actually split in half, and thus, I lost everything on the front wheel of my outcast. So no longer a four wheel drive vehicle. It was a two wheel drive, rear wheel drive vehicle. So with the added traction of the backflip tires, I think some additional machined diff gears would definitely be nice in this application. Next on the list is the servo and servo mount. Now, when it comes to servos, I am definitely a servo snob. I like fast, high torque servos and although this has some pretty decent specs it was slow and as far as the mount it definitely wiggles around now the servo is pretty well specced for what it is and i think the servo mount deters the spec of that servo last thing on the list for the negatives is the wheels and tires yes i did say wheels and tires that's actually on the positive side too, but what I don't like about the backflip tires is they are almost a direct copy of the Proline Badland tires. Now, although these are slightly larger than the Badlands, the tread pattern is almost exactly the same. Now, I'm not saying that these don't work. These definitely work, but they are almost direct copies. Now, the wheels are copied off of some famous wheels on the one-to-one -one market, the 1552s. So, as far as the differences, I'm not sure exactly, but they definitely look very similar to those famous wheels. All right, enough negative talk. Let's talk about some good things about the Arma Outcast. First thing, it is fast. You throw six S in this thing, and this thing is seriously fast. This thing has superpower. The BLX system is nothing less 
than super powerful. What gives the Outcast the next positive is the chassis and the lengthened arms. Now, you all know that this is a Typhon chassis with some Talion slash Creighton arms on it. So it is super wide, it is super short, and that's what makes it so nimble. This thing turns on a dime, this thing gets around, gets going, and is super controllable in the air. Next thing on the list is tires. These things have so much grip. These things are just absolutely my favorite tire to date on an RTR period. You have traction for days with these back flip tires from D-Boots. Next on the positive is the looks of the Outcast. Yes, it just looks cool. I know that I listed it on a negative as well, but I personally like the old truck look of this thing. It is super wide. It has that old look. I love the roll bar on it. This thing is just cool, and I definitely like the looks. Durability, this thing is super durable. Although I did have a couple of breakages during the running footage of this vehicle, this thing has superpowers when it comes to its plastics. Nothing broke as far as the plastics on this thing, and that was definitely nice. Now, I launched this thing, I launched it, and I relaunched it, and I jumped it, and I flipped it, and I landed completely wrong, and this thing definitely took a beating. The next two things have to do with the new items that Arma added to the Outcast vehicle. Now, of course, the battery tray right here, very, very nice that they're now accommodating a different way of putting batteries in their battery compartments. You have full clamming down of those batteries. So you have a front member up here that is adjustable. You have Velcro straps going fore and aft and side to side. You have wire management system in here. Everything works great with the battery compartment. Also new on the Outcast was the wheelie bar. Now mounted super, super high on the wing. It definitely gives you that get back down to earth feature that gets you back down so you can keep on driving and not flip over with all the power that the Outcast has. Last on the positive list is the parts availability. Now, like I said, this does use a multitude of different parts from different Arma vehicles, the Typhon, the Creighton, the Talion. It just uses some existing parts on the market, which is very nice because I had no issues getting parts almost within a couple of days across the country to get my Outcast back up and running. All right, so after my huge running footage, what did I break on my Arma Outcast? Exactly what you see in front of you. It equaled out to about 26 bucks in parts, which actually isn't too bad considering the torture I put my Outcast through. Now, the first thing that I did break was the rear chassis brace. It actually just sheared off right at the bolt at the bottom where it bolts underneath the chassis. So just kind of sheared off and that's what kind of made some things flop around towards the rear. So that thing sheared off. I did bend a rear dog bone. Uh, this is the dog bone right here. It is just slightly bent. Um, I probably could have tapped it back in place, but decided to go ahead and pick a, a set up so I have them and now I can flip them out. I have one extra now. Always good to have spare parts. Last thing is I did go ahead and I, I split a center diff spider gear. As you see right here, it just sheared right in half. It appears to be kind of like a pot metal. It would be nice if these were machined uh, steel, but um, I did find a slight weakness in the center diff with all that extra traction that those back flip tires have. So other mishaps on the trail while I was running my Outcast resulted in no money out of pocket. Now I ended up bending a screw up here on the front shock tower mounting the shock. That was simply replaced by another screw in my parts bin. I did have the motor wires pull out several times going from the motor to the ESC. Now that could have been because I did break the rear chassis by that point, but or the rear chassis brace, but Nonetheless, they kept pulling out, which was a little bit annoying more than anything. Lastly, the rear sway bar did pull out of the ball cups, but that was easily fixed by just snapping them back in. Now, finally, for my opinion on the Outcast. Now, after all of the negatives, the positives, the breakages, all of my input and output on this 
Arma Outcast. I definitely like it. I think this is the Arma of all Armas to get. It is fun to drive, has lots of traction, is super fast. It brought huge smiles to faces when I was driving this thing, including mine. It brought the kid out and this thing was a super fun rig to drive. The Outcast, it has everything. It gives you the agility and the nimbleness of an eight scale buggy. It gives you the width of a truggy. It gives you the wheels and tires of a monster truck. Everything is all buttoned up into one little package here in this stunt truck. Now, if you haven't already done so, please check out my unboxing video where I unbox the outcast show you everything you get inside the box i show all the nooks and crannies of the outcast including all the inner workings how this thing operates and overall a good glimpse of what you'd receive on day one with your outcast also check out my running video i put this vehicle through some serious paces i jumped it i over jumped it I landed it wrong. I definitely ran this outcast like it was the last day on earth. All right guys, well that is it. That is my full review of this outcast 6S BLX from Arma. I have definitely enjoyed this vehicle. This thing is gonna be staying here for a little bit longer here at the RC Network. I enjoy driving it, I enjoy working on it. It is a pleasure to have this thing at the RC Network. Now, if you have any comments or questions about this video, the Arma Outcast, or anything in general, please leave it on down below. And as always, thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for now, guys. Over and out.